What is the scariest or creepiest thing you have seen or heard? Part 3. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, Thread Tonic. Account 1. Hell, I lived in a house once that had child-sized footprints on the ceiling of one of the bedrooms. Extremely high ceilings. I could think of no way someone would get a child's feet up there. Not even climbing up a ladder and holding a kid upside down could have done it. Edit. Thanks for all the comments, kind Reddit folk. The ceiling was about 16 neened, and I'm going to assume from a lot of what people are saying that it was a kid walking on the sheetrock before it was put up, or a seriously high set of bunk beds. 2. Boyfriend lived in a house that made no sense. There was a light switch on a baseboard that worked a light two rooms away. For instance, just shitty only college kids can stand it. Kind of house. They decided to see if there was room in the attic space for some boxes. So boyfriend opens the hatch thing, pulls down the ladder, and goes up. Pulls the chain for the light to come on. The bare bulb is over a dusty room, almost empty, except for a rusty metal children's high chair. Boyfriend clicked the light back off, came back down the ladder, and said, No, we're never going up there. Account 3. I've had this in my mind for a long time, so at my grandparents' house there is this long-ass hallway with white walls, and at night it's scary and it's, Oh, right, but some days you could hear this laughing like young kids, softly laughing and rattling like toys and rustling a sh Count 4. Living in the northern part of Mexico, the drug cartel's war was very intense in the city where I lived a couple of years ago. I was waiting to cross the street when I saw a big truck dumping a plastic bag that happened to contain a fucking dismembered body. The worst part is that nobody did shit. I just waited for the light to change and ran like hell. Account 5. EMT here. I have a ton of these kind of stories, but this one sticks out the best. Warning. NSFW language. This call is from a few years ago. Our ambulance is dispatched to a residence for a male with leg pain. My partner and I walk in, and seated in the recliner is an older African-American male with a cast on his left leg. He tells us he was in a motorcycle accident a few weeks ago and broke his leg and was discharged from the hospital a couple of nights ago. He says he tripped over the coffee table and banged his bad leg again really hard and wanted to go back to the ER and have them check it out just to make sure he didn't re-injure himself. So after boring medical terminology, here, we're off to the local hospital. Talking with him in the back, he seemed like a pretty chill guy. We're bullshitting back and forth about motorcycles, his ER visit, his ex-wife, and was just generally an easygoing guy. Halfway to the hospital, though, he suddenly stops talking and holds his hand out to me like he wants to shake my hand. I take his hand and as I give him a firm handshake, he looks me straight in the eyes and says the creepiest thing I have ever heard. Thank you for everything you are about to do for me. His eyes then begin to bulge out of his sockets. He starts foaming at the mouth and starts screaming at the top of his lungs, cussing me and saying random shit like I'm gonna take a diabetic shit over you just over and over again for about a solid 45 seconds, maybe a minute. Then he stops, throws up all over himself, then collapses on the stretcher, unconscious. I literally just sat there the entire time in total shock and fear until he collapsed. Took a breath, checked my pants, told my partner to start driving faster, then began providing manual respirations to make sure he kept breathing. Crazy thing is, I'm talking to one of the ER nurses after we dropped him off. And she told me the same exact thing happened when he was in there earlier. And none of the doctors could figure out what it was. Six. Watching an Ace 7 Corsair grab the number to three cable that had not been fully retracted. After the wire broke and whipped around, two sailors were dead and two were amputees. Getting to the scene seconds after was the most horrific sight I have witnessed using a mop and pail to swab up the puddles of blood. Heart-wrenching. Account 7. To really get my story, you have to have an understanding of my third floor landing. There's a single set of stairs that lead up to it. Once on the landing, it's a T-shape, with an office the left, my bedroom to the right, and straight ahead is a bathroom with a shower. Anyway, one night, 10 p.m. I'm taking a shower before I head to sleep. The glass panels on my shower is that, like, 
concave, convex glass that blurs everything, so everything was blurred and unclear. I glance at the door and I see some kind of hand-like figure. Now, it was pitch black. So right there it freaked me out because I come from a family of pale white Welsh people. What freaked me out more was how the hand seemed to come through the door, or at least an angle where whomever the hand belonged to would be visible. All it did was hit the lights. That's it. No noise, no attack or anything. It just turned off the fucking lights. So there I am. I just witnessed a phantom hand, and now I'm in my shower, and it's pitch fucking black. I've never been so chilled to the bone before. Something about being in the darkness of the night, with the only noise being the water hitting the floor beneath me, just reduced me to the most primal state of pure fear I've ever been in. I eventually get myself to leave the shower and hit the lights. The relief that came over me was immense. I've never been able to explain it. The stairs up to the landing are old and creak like hell. I would have heard someone come and go down. No one was in my room or the office. Weirder still, nothing like it has happened since. TLDR phantom hand trolls me while I'm taking a shower. Account 8. I'm a journalist and was told this doozy by a woman I interviewed for a true crime story. When this woman was a young girl, say eight years old, she started to come downstairs at night to tell her father that there was a man in her closet. He tells her there's no such thing as the boogeyman and sends her back to bed. This happens on and off for like a week. Finally, he gets frustrated and walks her back to the room and says, I'll show you there's nothing in your closet, and goes to open the door. It opens an inch and then he feels someone slam it shut. Turns out there really was a man in her closet. This guy was a perv who would come into the house every night and stare at the girl from the closet while she slept. The dad kicked the shit out of him, and the perv went to prison for many years. I researched her story 20 years after this happened. The guy had just gotten out of jail again, and no one could find him. Account 9. I house it for a family friend when she goes out of town. The woman who lives there is really into a bunch of spiritual stuff. New Age stuff, Reiki, etc., the very first time I was house-sitting, I was outside watering the plants. I was the only one there and had closed the door after me. From the driveway where I was watering, I had a completely unobstructed view of the front door, the only door that was unlocked at the time. When I went back inside, there on the little table next to the front door was a half-eaten cookie. The table had been completely clear when I went outside, and I hadn't seen cookies that looked like that anywhere in the house. Nothing too creepy, but very puzzling and unsettling. When the woman returns, I mention it to her and she laughs and says she gets ghosts all the time. I'm a fairly skeptical person, but honestly, ghosts were the best explanation. The next time I was over, I was pooping around 1030. The house itself is fairly old and creaks from time to time, but nothing too loud or disruptive. While I was pooping, there comes a single loud knock from the other side of the bathroom door. This wasn't a little creak or pop from the house. It was a loud, determined rap on the door. It was enough to scare my poop back in for the rest of the night. Account 10. I'd been living alone for less than a week. I got some Chinese takeout and was eating in front of the TV. I finished my meal and cracked open the fortune cookie. It read, You will have a visitor tonight. Lock your door. There were no visitors that night, but the memory still haunts me. Account 11. I was once in a hot tub with some friends late at night, and we were all telling some stories. One of the guys told us this one, a story of a girl he knows, not sure if it is true, but multiple people in the hot tub who knew her verified it was true. So one day, this girl was called over to babysit. She did it a lot for these people, so it was routine for her. Anyways, she was told to put the kids to bed at nine, and she did. After she put the two bed, she started watching TV and doing homework, waiting for the parents to come home, but then she started hearing some noises coming out of the basement, like pans falling and stuff. She just ignored it and thought it was the washing machine or something. Anyways, a little later, she starts hearing the noises again. She decides to call the police and tell them she was hearing noises coming out of the basement at the house she is babysitting at. The lady at the station told her there is a patroller in her area and that he will be at the house in about 20 minutes. Anyways, in about five minutes, she hears a knock on the door, she answers. And it is a full SWAT team, she asked. I thought they were just sending a patroller. 
and one of the guys told her after you hung up the phone. We heard a second phone on the line hang up. Ended up, there was a man in the basement listening to the conversation. The lady in the station waited and heard him hang up, then immediately sent the SWAT team to help. They went downstairs and caught him. He was wanted for multiple cases of rape. Account 12. It was my first time staying home alone while my whole family was out at my brother's ball game. I was 13, I think. Anyways, I'm on the phone with a friend of mine feeling so grown up when someone beeps in on the other line. I tell her I will be right back and click over lines. Then the creepiest voice I have ever heard says, Hello, little girl. I am the man in your basement. Honestly, I laughed it off and just hung up thinking it was a prank call. I was a pretty confident little thing, and my neighborhood was pretty safe, so I figured someone was just messing with me, knowing it was my first time alone. They beeped in again, so I clicked over and heard, Don't you fucking hang up on me, you little betch. And the light started flickering, and there was banging under my feet. I know it sounds crazy, but my dog started freaking out, and my cat ran away. So I assure you I was not imagining a thing. Our basement was actually just an area connected to the garage. It was not finished. I heard what sounded like footsteps coming up. The garage steps to get into our kitchen. And I threw stuff in front of the door and hearing yelling and whatnot. I kept trying to hang up and call the cops, but every time I tried to, he was still on the phone. My friend told her parents what was happening, and they ran to the neighbor's house to call the police for me. I sat petrified with a broken rifle, a butcher knife and a baseball bat behind my front door because it's the only place in the house downstairs that couldn't be seen from a window, crying. Eventually, I clicked over to hear a police dispatcher on the phone and stayed on the line with her until the police got to my house. There was no sign of forced entry, though we had a broken window pane on our outside garage door that had been messed up for months prior, and my guess is he used that to get in. The police assumed I was just a paranoid girl, and they were going to leave me home alone after they gave an all clear. Fortunately, a family friend had been driving by and saw the cops there and stopped to see if everything was okay. He gave me a ride to the school where my family was. They were skeptical that anything had happened. But we did get a security system not too much longer after that, and my parents both got cell phones, too. This was 94, I think. So cell phones weren't super popular yet. After that happened... I swear there was someone stalking me for years. I would leave my apartment locked and bolted and come back to find appliances on hair dryer, stove, heat on in the middle of the summer. I lived in four different places and would get strange phone calls at everyone despite being unlisted. Cars would randomly be parked down the road from a house and speed up and slam on the brakes as I would run inside. I would hear loud bangs outside when I lived out in the country. Nothing has happened since I've been in my current house and married, but I am still super paranoid all the time. TLDR, man in my basement got away, got stalked for years. Account 13. I was babysitting my nieces one Friday night while my brother-in-law took his wife to dinner. She has a strict bedtime of 8 p.m., so after successfully getting her to sleep, no small task. I decided I would watch the Skyfall movie that people wouldn't shut up about. About halfway into the movie, I am absolutely chilled to the bone when Sophie, who sneaked out of bed and behind the couch, says directly into my ear, mere inches away, you know James Bond murdered Jesus, right? I haven't offered to watch her again. Account 14. I saw this little bird walking on the street when suddenly a seagull grabbed it in its mouth. Seagull started to smash this helpless bird against the ground few times. After a while, it ate the bird and I saw a bump on Seagull's neck like the bird was stuck in its throat. Then it flew off. I was just standing there and said, what the fuck? Seagulls shouldn't do that. Fuck seagulls. Account 15. Not creepy. Definitely scary. My parents' house got hit by a tornado when I was in high school. You don't realize how fast those things happen until you've been in that situation. We live in rural North Carolina. Not exactly Tornado Alley, but we do get some bad storms now and again. My dad had this habit of liking to sit out and watch thunderstorms come in. We were all inside when we hear him yelling for us to come out. We walk out and the sky just looks surreal. There was a wall of black clouds sweeping towards our house at a disturbingly fast pace. When I say black, I don't mean really dark gray or steely blue. 
I mean, black, jet-black clouds like an ink cloud from a giant octopus was squirted into the sky. I've never seen it before in my life, not even on a video, and hope to never see it again. So we were pretty freaked out by the clouds and the wind was picking up. I mean, those clouds were moving fast. Someone, I think my mom, said something to the effect of maybe we should get inside just to be safe. But things start going crazy even before we can turn around. The wind goes from a 7 out of 10 on the windy scale to a 25 in like 3 seconds flat. We turn to get inside and I'm the last to go in the door. I try to pull it closed behind me but the wind is sucking the door open. I have to put both hands on the knob and jerk back with my full weight to get the door to shut. At this point, it's probably been 45 seconds since my dad called us outside. We run to the hallway and start throwing things out of the closet under the stairs and climbing in. The whole house is full of this absolutely indescribable roaring noise. It was like a jet was taking off on our roof, or a train was driving through the living room. It wasn't so much sound as a physical force. It made your head throb. It was so loud, you could feel it constantly in the pit of your stomach, like the boom from a loud bass speaker. But instead of having a beat, it was just constant. It felt like your eyeballs were quivering in your head. The pressure changes from the wind also screws with your sense of balance. I kept getting that sense of vertigo you feel when standing at the top of a cliff looking down. It was an absolute sensory overload. We all jump under the stairs and shut the door. When we realize we had left the dog out in the house, my mom opens the door and yells for the dog, which comes barreling into the closet like a bat out of hell. We shut the door. At this point, it's been maybe a minute and a half, just 90 seconds, since we were sitting in the kitchen chatting and my dad yelled at us to come outside and look at these crazy clouds. That's how long it took to go from normal evening to absolute terror. We sat under the stairs for maybe that much time again. Two minutes probably three at most. It seemed like longer, of course. Everything was shaking. I was just waiting for the walls to tear apart around us or debris to start smashing through the door. Then the sound passed and we came out. The house was still standing around us. So far, so good. We go back out on the front porch and the door won't open. I give it a heave and push it open a few feet and squeeze out. The porch is destroyed. We had a small barn sitting in front of our house, and it had been obliterated. The tornado had picked up the barn, turned it into kindling, and threw it at our house. The posts on the front poach were all destroyed, and it was just covered with broken glass, nails, shattered two-by-fours, and pieces of particle board looking out over our pasture in front of our house, where we kept a horse and some cows, and there were just masses of trees down everywhere. One stand of pines to the south of our house— probably about two or three acres of trees in total, were just gone. Our cars were pockmarked with hail damage. Our full-sized pontoon boat that we used for family trips to the lake on the weekends had been picked up from the front yard, rotated 90 degrees, and deposited in the backyard about 50 yards away. Behind our house, a massive poplar tree was down over the driveway and had fallen just feet from the house. Yet other things remained weirdly untouched. One of our barns was destroyed, but the other, standing maybe 30 yards away, wasn't even missing a shingle. All in all, we were incredibly lucky. The house sustained major damage, despite its appearance, though. The roof had to be replaced because the suction from the tornado had made it unstable. In fact, to this day, you can still see cracks in the walls in the corners of the top floor where the tornado had nearly sucked the roof off the house. But we came out. None of us hurt and even slept in our own beds that night. So when I see stories like those out of Oklahoma a few days ago, I always think back to those few minutes of terror and think how lucky I was that those weren't my last moments, as they were for so many there told Dar parents' house, hit by a tornado, we all survived. But a lot of our stuff got messed up. It was terrifying. Edit. Proof. It was the one at the top, the 1998. I was right. Same year I graduated high school. The pertinent bit of info in that one is the supercell that went from Caldwell to Mecklenburg County. You can see that the site lists the affected county as Lincoln, which is actually just a hair north of where I lived in northern Gaston County, directly west of Mecklenburg County.